Welcome to my first game of TTN. Sorry about the mic, by the way. Uh, my current normal mic's not working, and my cat is right next to the microphone, so she might be noisy and obnoxious. I apologize, by which I mean right next to my laptop mic. Um, we are going to be playing Deli All in my first game of TTN in maybe 15 years-ish. Um, I haven't done any so far in the return. It's been very popular. It's been a big hit. I'm not... Uh, I think it's been great. It's doing so well. I gotta remember, plus is not on. Uh, we will have to suffer through elemental all. Uh, just making sure I got the rules set. Yeah, right. Same plus wall random combo elemental all. Closed or semi closed of one open. I don't really remember how that works. I just think you have one card that's open and the rest closed. Presumably, you want to use that open card as fast as possible. Um, I'm not sure it's obvious which of my cards my opponent can see but presumably it's the one lined up with the one I'll be able to see in their hand, so I'll know which one I kind of want to get, get rid of. Again, this is, this is all new to me. Uh, and so we're starting off with a very easy opponent. I'm on the Guardian's account of Deliel. Ah, it does make it clear. Oh, that's an annoying thing to have to scroll. Okay. Um, so we have six cards with numbers in various places on the card. They have one visible card. Presumably, tens are the most powerful number. Um, presumably, they have first turn. Okay, they're going to take that safe square, probably. Just looking at our cards. 95A2, 7766, 29A3. It's so weird to have some that are like graphics, like, right? Like, 4A73, that's pretty clearly a Fire Emblem character, right? And then uh, 29A3 is just a person. Um, all right, so we have six cards each. So we're going to occupy 12 squares, I guess. Presumably this means I do get last turn, right? Presumably we use all 12 cards. And so... Huh. Oh, there's an E on every spot. Can we read what the E's are on the cards? I think... I think the second card, the 7766, I'm not sure I'm highlighting it for you. I think I'm highlighting lots of things. That looks like it has a purple symbol that matches some of these cards. It seems like some might have multiple symbols. It seems like some have multiple symbols. I I don't think the top card has an element. I don't think the third card has an element. The fourth card has the winged feather, which lines up with the um, the leftmost thing in the second row, or one of the things there. Okay, they do take the free card, and they do use their, their visible card. Now, I would like to use my A476, um, but... I kind of want to occupy... I guess what we call four, if we think of the board as one, two, three, four, five, uh, is the top row, one, two, three, four, next row, five, six, seven, eight, third row, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, fourth row, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. Then I think I kind of want to occupy four because if it's safe, that's great, and I have some play despite unpleasantness of them getting a free square and me not doing so. And if they take it, like, how much more behind am I really? Okay, so there are 13 squares on the board, and there's going to be presumably 12 cards played. So that leaves one square left over at the end. Now, A476 is not really the card I want to put in four. Now, if he takes in four, I'll generally want stuff facing to the right and maybe facing up to actively play towards the action. If he does not take in 8, then I probably can block 8 next turn with A476. Um, though in which case, I really don't have much up. That might be an important card to hold on to if the game's going to be directed that way. If I go in 4 and he doesn't go anywhere near the action, I don't really know where I want to be. Um. How likely are double numbers going up, right? Well, all decks are on. Based on my hand, you know, I do have that. There are a bunch of double numbers in the hand, but not, like, an infinite amount. 
I could also put... Mm. Nah, not really. I assume the blocks count as walls of 10. I assume. So that can set off some funny plus walls in the middle of the board. Yeah, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna try to take the um the potential good square. I also like that okay, if he plus walls it, he's locked in a second free card, and I'm way behind. But if he doesn't plus wall it, he can overpower it due to the water, but then I have combo potential against that. Um, and I think I, I don't really understand how I'm supposed to be setting up the board. You know, I could play a strong corner in 1 or in 16 or something. But I think I want to... I think I want to roll the dice. I don't know if first or second turn's an advantage here. Usually having last turn's a pretty big advantage. Um, presumably first turn, if first turn gets a free square, and can use their open card, which presumably, again, ours is the last one, um, then presumably... They now have the advantage. I remember being, you know, it's easy to get annoyed at un uh, unbalanced boards. Um, so first turn clearly is an advantage in this specific game, but it might, it probably is that second turn has an advantage generally, right? If you play three by three triple triad, first turn is a slight advantage. But if you turn triple triad into a two by two game, what you find is last turn is just a huge advantage. And the advantage first turn gets in normal triple triad, there's a good chance it's not to do it all with having first turn, that that's actually a cost, right? That putting a card on the board lets the opponent have some initiative against that card. You might think it lets me set up combos and stuff, you know, through five or something like that, but that is very much relying on the power of last turn, right? It's trying to get rid of the first turn weakness by having it connect. All right, he does have it under control. That is a shame. Now, does he have a second card with double numbers facing up? Do we want to try to, um, do we want to try to call big bluffs here? I probably don't. Probably don't. I think we do want to get A467 out of my hand, and I haven't really found a way to yet. So that's probably something I should be putting some effort in. And if I wanted to put it on a neutral square, maybe six? There's not other squares that can kind of just sit. There's also, um, counting as hard, 11. But 11 doesn't set me up very well. Six doesn't set me up either. It's just kind of a bad card here. I could just take with it in seven, but at this point I'm just letting him lock in so many cards, right? I'll <laughs> have three cards locked into my zero. That does not seem the answer. Um, and one is uncomfortable, right? I don't have good captures back in one. What I'd like to do if it was not partially open is play 4A7-3 in 11. That gives me some nice last turns, and I think that's what I'll do. I think that's what I'll do. We really got to get A476 out of my hand, but I might play that in 10 next turn. Right? 10 is kind of half open. So I think this is going really, really badly for me, right? He got a free square. I went, okay, let's just hope he doesn't have it. Not only did he have it, but he, he might have had two of it, right? You know, he might not have 12, but he might have 12. Um, and if he didn't have 12, there's a pretty decent chance he has 12 after my move. I just don't know how frequent stuff is, and I thought I need compensation. Not sure what else I should have gone for. It's possible I made the right move, and it just didn't work out here. But it's possible I very much did not make the right move. Now, sadly, we don't have any um, plus potential in 7, but 7 could scare him out of being able to go in 12. And 6-4-A-6 is potentially a really nice last turn for me in 7, though it can't actually interact with that many squares, right? 
It feels like these moves in the middle of the board on final turns should interact with a lot of the board. Maybe they just don't. Maybe so much of the board is decided by them. Ah, that gets a plus one. Gotta keep an eye on that. I forgot about elementals after talking about them at the start. So that removes the one square I think that 7766 could have had an elemental. Now, what I want to do is I want to play A476 in 15. It gets it out of my hand. That card is no capture in um, in 6 because of the minus 1 on the plus 1. And I don't really have a great other way to get it out of the hand. Maybe I could bluff with it in 5. I have a recapture. And it sort of hints that I have something big for 6. Which I don't. But I think bluffing that square could be nice. One other thing, though, is it does have a plus wall in 15, but he'll always be aware of that and able to play around it. So maybe I should bluff it in 5. I really don't want it in my hand. It's not a good card to have in my hand. So 15 or 5. 5 is trying to make me think I have 6. And 15 is hoping he doesn't have something great to put in 16. It's tricky because I potentially walk into some combos, but just trying to do something useful with it. I'm not convinced of that. I think I'm going to lose this game really badly. I think I do not have any sense of this. Um, but uh, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll see what happens. This is so weird to look at, like, the cards with numbers in different corners of the card. Um, the 16 board. Very interesting. I'm not even sure I'm going to get last turn this game, right? I don't know. I'm going to play on to play to plan. But if he just, like, if the game, like, ends with me having one card left, I'll just be surprised, you know? It's kind of curious that um, you'd think there would be, like, locked in four blocks a game if there's 12 cards, right? just to force the board to be fully occupied by the end of the game. My suspicion is that second turn has an advantage unless first turn has a free square. Is it possible for there to be two free squares? Not with three blocks, but I don't know if the block number is random or not. All right, we did get him to block five, uh, six. We get a same there. Okay. Sadly, our 6-4-A-6 does not land nearly as well with that exact 6 facing out as we would have dreamed of. That's annoying. That's annoying. I, I mean, I think we gotta play 7-7-6-6 seven, seven, six, six in 1, but that we don't have this big powerful thing to do in, in 7 is really crummy for us. The other thing to do is could we find a way to use 95A2 useful? And the answer is just no. So we're going to lock in a card. We're going to say, I got one card this game. Boom. We got a card. We're only down 8 to 4. <laughs> With very little combo potential. Oh, that 6 is so annoying. Right? Because we had like we didn't have play against that much, but we'd play against an 8, we'd play against a 10. As long as it didn't get a plus one, we could take anything five or down. So six, seven, and nine were the annoying numbers. Um, yeah, and those were always going to be annoying given my hand. So there was a lot of stuff that was annoying, but this is the trolliest number to be annoying. Okay. Now, we're down eight to four. Presuming we have last turn, if I play nine, five, eight, two, and two, I'm guaranteed at least two captures on my final turn. And I might even, if my final turn is in 12, land three captures. So I think we just block two. And if the game ends here, we lose eight to four. But if the game doesn't end here, we've gotten at least a tie.
I probably should have like sent a message to someone asking, uh, what are the rules? You know, do I get final turn? But maybe it's fun to find out. Maybe it's fun to find out. I have a very good chance of winning if I have final turn, because I think it's really scary for him not to block seven. It's just so easy for me to have the triple capture in seven. I lose? Okay. Who <laughs> knew? Okay, so first turn has an enormous advantage. Okay, that's funny. Oh, man. All right, so we learned something. I just figured, given that the board's unoccupied, they let you play out all your cards. Okay, well, there's a loss. Um, and I'll play my next game shortly. That's funny. We learned something. 